So let's take a few moments to drop into our meditative state. Let's take a few moments to become fully present with where we are, knowing that often we get really caught up in our busy lives, running to and fro, back and forth, spinning in all kinds of ideas. So let's take a few moments to ground ourselves into the body, into the physical earth, because we know that as we ground ourselves, we also open up to the multi-dimensionals, multi-dimensional aspects of who we are, having our feet firmly planted on the ground, feeling that earth frequency, which we can perceive as coming up from below and supporting us, nurturing and sustaining us, recognizing ourselves as a part of nature, in fact, as nature itself. Feeling ourselves supported by that electromagnetic field of the earth, whereby then we can also expand and connect to the multidimensional field of who we truly are beyond the form-based reality that we're experiencing now. Allowing ourselves to simultaneously then expand upward into the heavens as we open our crown chakras like antennas, tapping into the multidimensional frequencies that are us and that will be reflected in this channeling state. For we are all channelers, in a manner of speaking, translating soul energy into physical terms in each moment. Translating soul into flesh. And so as we enter a meditative and channeling state, we create a hyperconductive link to the soul energy that we are so that we can be more in tune, more in resonance with our true nature rather than all the various beliefs that we buy into in our day-to-day -day personality lives. Good day to you all. We welcome you to the realms of light, where the vast majority of who you are also exists. We welcome you to these realms of light, from where your physical lives, your physical personalities, and your entire physical worlds also spring, emerging from that non-physical aspect or beingness of you. And today we will begin by reminding each and every one of you that is listening in whatever moment you find yourself to be listening in because we know this is going out in a recording as well that you are all channelers in a manner of speaking for you are all translating the non-physical to physical your soul energy into flesh you are constantly crystallizing yourselves as the beings that you think that you are when you are in fact so much more than what you think you are for you are focused and we do not mean this in a negative way not in a judgmental way shall we say even if it is negative because it is reductionist you are focused to a very thin sliver of reality and that is what gives you your specialization as a physical being and so you can appreciate this finite focus even as a scientist might look through a microscope and appreciate all kinds of microbial life that would not be visible otherwise. So too can you appreciate this exquisite focus of physical reality that you have crystallized yourselves to be 
necessarily to the exclusion of much stimuli that is also part of who you are, for in fact you are all that is, focusing yourself into this finite experience. And like the scientist does not want to be distracted by what is happening in the world from which they are perceiving into these microbial lives. So too do you want to attenuate all these other realities, other side conversations, other concerns, so that you can focus very exquisitely down into that very thin layer of reality that you call your physical lives. And you have grown accustomed to believing yourself to be that being that is so exquisitely focused and now comes the grand adventure of opening it all up and remembering that you are the being peering through the microscope as well and that you are engaged in all kinds of other associations of consciousness. You are taking your eyes off of that finite sliver of reality expanding your senses as it were and so many of you are recognizing that you are in fact bringing through your personality structure who you truly are the other portions or layers of consciousness which express themselves through you and you are becoming more available to recognizing this flow of information and it will come in many different types of channels as many of you are experiencing some of you will translate it in one way, some of you in another way, each one of you in a very unique way. For each of you is highly unique and each of you has a piece of the puzzle, a note in the symphony to play. And even the discussion you began before this channeling session, this idea of concentric circles and different groups of people coming together to express the way each of you channels this energy in a unique way through whatever facet or mode or permission slip or modality that you choose, be it astrology or sacred geometry or different works of art or verbal channeling or music or any other form of translation. These are all translations of the infinite into finite terms that you can then relate to as finite beings as you have believed yourselves to be. And yet the finite art that you create creates a doorway to the infinite. So each of you are those doorways and you're translating your beingness into these art forms that the, themselves become doorways for you all to enter through and into so you can get more glimpses of the multidimensional crystal of creation with all its infinity of facets and portals and doorways into all manner of versions of yourself reflected and re-reflected back and forth and back and forth and all around through these multidimensional portals and crystals and doorways and reflections and mirrors creating an infinitude of patterns that are so highly unique and so you are learning to expand out of that finite focus into more and more of yourselves and you are helping each other for each of you has a unique way to express, to channel the infinity through your finite beingness, through your physical focus into art or into doorways, portals, permission slips, modalities that will aid and assist each and every one in the group, including yourself, to experience more and more of your true natural selves. You are truly creating a society based on a resonance and harmonization whereby each individual can be their true unique self, their unique vibration and the social structure will then support that individual for it will be recognized that that individual is an intricate part of the ascension and integrative society that you're co-creating. And so you will be doing this in small groups for now, even while in the greater society, things appear to be breaking down because they are in fact breaking down. This is part of the process. Even as within yourselves, you know that you break down various negative beliefs and go through all kinds of upheavals as a result of channeling your energy through the negative belief structures and having an experience of their density. 
So to your society is going through a similar process, as you know, as we've talked about in other transmissions. However, what you're creating in your small circles at this time, this is the new frequency that you're anchoring to the earth, that you're, in a manner of speaking, co-creating together, truly you are shifting to versions of yourselves that are already expressing these frequencies. But the idea is you are having the experience of stepping into these realities where between small groups, two, three, four, five individuals, you're creating these harmonic resonance chambers in a manner of speaking, these bubble realities within which fourth density is emerging amongst each and every one of you. And so I encourage you to, we encourage you to continue to co-create within these groups and when you experience within these groups various upheavals of your own attachments to third density consciousness, well then work with that in a conscious way for that is what is paving the way for the ascension, the transformation. Each of you are responsible for your own growth and your own path and yet you are also by coming together in groups, creating the spaces, the safe spaces within each, within which each and every one of you can explore these transformations and feel supported by the groups. For you are reinforcing each other as it were. When one changes, you create a field within which permission is given in a manner of speaking for all of you to change and grow and to become and step into more of your true natural selves. So honor these groups, honor these circles. You are playing a very powerful part in the ascension process. Even while in the day-to-day -day nitty gritty, it might feel like you're not doing anything special. You are indeed doing much for the upliftment of humanity, for the transformation of consciousness. You're transforming great darkness into light and this is why it feels so dark at times because it is indeed quite a lot of darkness you have put upon your plates and yet we value each and every one of you for the willingness to transform great limitation to freedom as you are. So do not be surprised if time to time it feels a bit dark because that is what you signed up for and what you had the courage to embark upon as a process of transformation in the arc from darkness to light, limitation to freedom, contraction to expansion, segregation and separation to integration and harmonization. And believe us when we tell you the fruits of your labors will be sweet indeed in the colloquial arc of transformation in that time-space reality where you experience the blossoming and the blooming and then the fruit of your labors as it were. For you are heading into that phase, those phases of your lives that is in a manner of speaking, reaping what you have been sowing. And so you will begin to see more and more manifestations in your life of this ascended consciousness and you will be very much enriched by these experiences of reflection of that which you have been working on for some time now. So enjoy yourselves and enjoy each other. Enjoy the frequencies that you co-create. For you are a wonderful bunch. Those of you that are tuning in are hearing this specific message because this message is specifically for each and every one of you. So we welcome you into these circles of light which are reflections and these powerful bubble realities you are creating in groups and harmonizations. There was an old saying and drawing from your Christian tradition now, this whole idea of when two or more are gathered, that biblical phrase that speaks to the co-creative ability, for you'll notice many of your traditions, whether it comes from the East or from the West, will have these sayings that really summarize these truths which are ancient. The idea that when two or more of you gather in this co-creative endeavor and adventure, you create a bubble reality, a reinforcing bubble reality, and this is how you can very powerfully shift 
by supporting one another in the ascended frequencies. Of course, each and every one of you is responsible for your own transformation, but the reflective mirrors that you set up with one another can be very powerful indeed. And this is the adventure now, the time is now for you all to come together, no more alone rangers. This is about co-creative unification and harmonization, integration. As you integrate your personalities and all the seeming factions and beliefs within yourselves, so too will you be creating a society that reflects the co-creative harmonization between each and every part for what is within will be reflected without, of course. Thusly, each and every one of you is feeling the calling of a very specific, unique gift that you have to share. Thusly, as always, we encourage you to act on your impulses, to act on those impulses that come from your higher mind, that you translate as excitement and passion, to act on that. And let the breadcrumbs reveal to you who you truly are, for that is coming from your higher mind. And so each and every one, in a manner of speaking, each and every one of you is channeling. And you're learning to receive it in all the unique ways you receive it. Some of you will get it as a language of light, others of you as patterns, others of you as vocal, others of you as a sense of frequency that you translate in a variety of ways, be it into music, into art, into readings, into healing work, all kinds of modalities for you to experience and explore. Of course, you don't have to lock yourself into one unless you find that exciting, of course. You can explore, for you'll find that music has a healing component and healing has a musical component even as the channel himself is learning what he has already, of course, already known, which each and every one of you deep down knows as well, that healing itself is a kind of harmonization and an interplay of harmonics, getting specific areas and organs and systems of the body to resonate in a kind of harmonic relationship with one another. So too you will discover that the arts, the visual arts, the creative arts, all these different art forms that you have previously believed were separate entities are actually aspects of one and the same thing. Or it is unitive consciousness that you are beginning to explore now upon your planet, so you will find that that which you perceive to be discrete and separate disciplines are actually aspects of the same discipline, the same knowingness that emerges from each and every one of you, for each and every one of you emerges from the knowingness of the all that is, and the universe indeed is holographic, and a kind of fractalized, sacred, harmonic, with sacred ratios and proportions, in a manner of speaking, very fractal-like. So you'll find reflections and reflections within reflections, all emanating from this sense of oneness that becomes the multiplicity. Therefore, even as your bodies are composed of many cells, so is your personality composed of many components, your society composed of many people, your oversoul composed of many souls and aspect selves, and so on and on it goes. This versions, these versions of multiplicity through the different layers and portions of consciousness. So we congratulate you for taking the steps that you have taken to experience more and more of your true natural selves and the sharing of who you are. For whether you have taken large steps or small steps and everything in between, they are indeed noticed very much. And each time you step into your true natural self, you aid and assist everyone around you. You raise the frequency of not only yourself and the people around you, but indeed the entire creation begins to reflect that frequency back to you. And it becomes available for all manner of beings and people that interact. Ripples in a pond affecting many people that you know and many people that you do not know and worlds that you know and worlds that you do not know. 
So honor yourselves and honor each choice that you make to be in alignment with the light. And when the darkness is revealed, be kind to yourselves, for this is indeed part of the journey. It does not mean you have failed in some way or taken a, a wrong turn. There is no judgment, none coming from the higher dimensions, only that which comes from your physical minds. So do not judge yourselves. For when you judge yourselves, you are in the energy of judgment. When you judge others, you are in the energy of judgment. So this is a segregative energy. So I add segregation to segregation. So honor yourselves and love yourselves particularly and always honor the step within which you find yourself, be it experienced as a segregative or a unitive consciousness. Every step is valid within all that is, so do not invalidate yourselves, nor any step that you happen to be on, be it that you're experiencing negative or positive energy on that particular step, for it is all important, it is all part of the learning. And you would not be where you are had you not taken steps into both the positive and negative frequencies. In fact, your entire lives are the result of a kind of focal energy which is separating you in a manner of speaking from who you truly are so that you can have a very specific focus within a very specific time-space reality. So both positive and negative exist in the universe. When you step into the neutral zone, you have more freedom of choice, which becomes a very positive experience, integrative experience. You start to see this and that instead of this or that. And you start to move into that unitive frequency, which is so lovely. Perhaps we can, for a moment, take some moments of your time to integrate what has been delivered. To rest in a meditative state, feeling your vibrational field of energy that surrounds you. Feeling your connection to your heart centers. And expanding like a column of light upwards and downwards from the heart center towards your root center, towards your crown center, expanding this column of light and moving beyond the root and the crown like a lovely torus field surrounding you in a 360 degree pattern as you'd say in your time-space reality. Feeling the integration of your beingness and the many layers of consciousness from which you emanate and through which you emanate. Letting yourself recognize that this bubble reality is in a manner of speaking created by a higher mind as a kind of reflective mirror into which you will project your theme of exploration your belief matrices. And from this stuff of your energy, you will create the experience of the outside world, interacting within your own unique bubble. And while you might interact with other beings, you can know that you are creating a version of them through your energy in order to perceive them in your reality. Just that you must, at some point, own all your projections and all your ideas about the other beings in your life. For you have your own unique filters through which you perceive 
the others. And the other awakening too. The responsibility you have to clear the filters, but also to employ filters that are more in alignment with who you truly are as a being. You are each responsible for this bubble that surrounds you, like a gardener responsible for their garden. You are responsible for the flowers and the weeds then. So we suggest you tend to this garden very regularly. For you will find a deep magic within this garden of yourself. And you will find much aid and assistance. As you work with the various elements of your garden, which are the various beliefs that you have adopted. The various stories that you tell yourselves. So let us rest in this bubble for a moment. This co-creative bubble, this reflective matrix within which you reside which is so lovingly held by your higher mind so that you can have this experience of a dream of physical reality within the consciousness of yourself as the soul. So let us take responsibility for this beautiful garden with its infinite potential. For you are all infinite beings. And now, having rested in that meditative state, we will ask if there are any questions or clarifications. Well, I have a question. Okay. Um, Very good. First of all, I found these, the, um, the lesson very nurturing, um, very filling. Uh, into our um, into our being, uh, spiritual being as well. And when you spoke about the garden, I was imagining uh, the rain, you know, coming into the garden and nourishing what needs uh, nourishment. And so it, it makes me think about um, how we, as uh, our consciousness, Create the weather. Yes. Um, and I'm wondering a little bit of, if you could speak about um, why perhaps we're creating the drought here in in, uh, in California. Uh, is that something that uh, you know we're doing that for a reason? Uh, can we switch that up, change it a little bit, or just some ideas, perhaps? Very good. Indeed, many of you being readers of Seth and followers of various channels understand the idea of creating reality. And of course, you do create your weather patterns and masses. You do create your psychological patterns, which are linked together in a kind of reflective reality. And indeed, Lack of nourishment can be metaphorically understood to be the cutting off of many beings within your civilization from the nourishment that is theirs, ready for the taking, wanting to sprinkle itself down from the higher dimensions. However, when beings become very isolated within their personality matrix, they have a tendency to let that nourishment roll off their energy field and it doesn't get integrated. 
Likewise, you will then experience various aspects of drought, for there is a drought of the soul happening. And it is this that you are projecting outward and the field of nature reflecting back to you this sense of drought that you're collectively experiencing as a species. And so it is part of the fourth density ascension process to recognize that you are having a hand in the creation of the mass realities and that as you, each and every one of you, begin to nourish your soul and become fountains of nourishment for others, so too will your weather begin to reflect the nourishment that is becoming once again abundant. It has been perceived by many a culture that spells of certain kinds of weather were reflections of imbalances and they would have their own ways of seeking to create those balances. And you are, as a culture, recognizing that you to have within your hands, within your hearts, that power as well. And so it is up to each and every one of you to create rituals and modalities and permission slips to connect you to the nourishment that is yours, that is who you are. And let it rain down on you through the layers of consciousness and open yourselves up to receive the nourishment that is always coming. And when you open yourself up spiritually, so too will the physical being a reflection. Reflect that change back to you in your externalized world. Indeed, the metaphor of gardening is a powerful one, for now is the time to reconnect to the earth, to reconnect to the cycles of earth, and to let the earth teach you the mysteries of life. For the earth itself is indeed a mystery school. And you can each and every one of you develop and cultivate a relationship, even as we are encouraging the channel to do, with the earth, with the plants, with the minerals, with the animals, with the nature spirits, and create a kind of reflective harmonization through whatever means suits you. And begin to experience the earth vibration and begin to take in the earth nourishment that way as well. For much flows to you from the earth and yet many of you are so isolated from the touch, the blessed touch of the earth even while you are, paradoxically enough, emanations of the earth itself. But you're playing this game of separation and segregation as you know. So reconnecting to the earth. And also being mindful of what beliefs you buy into for it is many a belief structures even within those that claim to be acting for change are in fact buying into many negative beliefs that are in fact cutting themselves off from the very change they think they are working towards. Fighting for is a more accurate term and of course when you fight you are in a segregative state. For you cannot fight against the reflection in your own mirror, it makes no sense. Thus when you expand into unitive consciousness and begin to take ownership of this field of consciousness that you are, from which you co-create the collective consensus reality, you then take an active part, and we assure you this part comes from love and harmonization. How do we say this? It is at once validating of all that is, At the same time, you need not necessarily condone negative acts that are based in segregation, but you can come from a place of validation, compassion and understanding, which is the unity of consciousness. And taking responsibility for yourselves primarily and what beliefs you are buying into are they fear-based? Are they love-based? The very first question. And are you operating from a fear-based belief? 
or from a love-based belief, that is really the first place to look. And then all action, let it flow from that. Of course, as you know, acting on your impulses, acting on your passion is a powerful way to anchor in the higher vibrational fury you can see into this great garden of the earth that is very much reflective of you. So we will continue to encourage very much their connection to earth for the earth does indeed have many many mysteries and secrets to share. The beings of the earth know much that humanity has pretended to have forgotten which you all know deep in your hearts and as you open your hearts and you open yourselves to the world that you live in you will reclaim these secrets and these mysteries This is why many mystery schools stress or put such a high importance on connecting to the earth. Because it is from that foundation then that you grow into the multi-dimensions. So we thank you for your question because it does highlight a point that we wish to make. To make those connections in whatever way your heart tells you. It doesn't have to be some elaborate ritual, but something that you can relate to in your natural world, some way, some relationship would be most beneficial at this time. So we hope that helps. We feel that we could go on for a long time on this particular subject but we hope we have given enough to chew on as you say yes thank you any other questions bubbling around out there I have another question, please. Very good. You spoke about the thin veil of reality. And uh, my question is, can you elaborate more on, on that, please? The thin veil of reality. The thin, thin veil of reality. Hmm. Can you be more specific on your question? Well, what, what does that mean, that the veil is thin? Okay. So, the idea being that when you pass through third density and you crystallize yourself into such a finite physical focus to the exclusion of the other layers and portions of consciousness from which your very physical world springs, and you create a belief system and the belief matrix and the template within which you believe that you are. Add it alone, as it were, that you are a being separated and segregated and fending for itself in the physical world, which itself feels quite alien to because you feel separated from it as well. This kind of third density thinking, you would say the veils would be very thick because you are not allowing your connection to the all that is that you are, you're experiencing yourself exclusively as it were, as a very finite physical being. And might we add to that, this is quite a feat of consciousness to actually convince yourselves that you're separate. This is quite a wondrous work of art, very unique in the universe for it takes a lot of layering and convincing and very much finesse and mastery to create an experience of actual separation. We wonder and marvel at this creation you have created on earth. So that being said, of course, then within that you feel like the, the veils are very thick because you feel so separated from the all that is that you are. Now when we talk about thinning of the veils, 
which we don't exactly remember using that term, but we know what you mean. The idea is that these, these veils become thinner and you begin to allow your beliefs, your beliefs allow <clears throat> for more penetration of information from the other dimensions, the other layers of consciousness from which your physical life springs. You allow this physicalized consciousness, which is so heavily invested in physical reality, to begin to perceive that there is more to reality than what it previously thought was the case. And so then, in a manner of speaking, you can say the veils are thinning because this individualized consciousness is beginning to perceive these other levels of consciousness and perceive the other dimensionality. So this is what we mean, or this is what is colloquially meant by the thinning of the veils. So hopefully this helps. Yes, thank you. That clarified that for me. I appreciate it. Very good. We also can suggest you do not always have to have a question. Sometimes you can simply share an experience. Make a statement. Okay. I'm not sure how this ties into Vanessa's, um, but I was also thinking of the thinning of the veils. I've noticed that many deceased loved ones are coming through very easily, and I don't know if that's moving through to our fourth density, and that's how things are more naturally going to be, or if that's just a supportive way of helping us move into that, or, or any insight that you would have into, into some of the things that are happening. Very good. And we'll begin by saying it's and, 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 not or, 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 or. Because indeed it is the idea now that you're moving into fourth density, which will very much mean the, as you say, colloquially thinning of the veils to the point where you will interact with loved ones, as you say, on the other side, much more frequently, much more regularly. And of course, it is recognized that this being the time that such an awakening is taking place on Earth, then many of these loved ones also recognize the timing is now to be able to help those that are still as constant, what you call the living world, which is kind of a misnomer, but that is another kind of warmth. So they are reaching out more and more to your physical selves, because of course they are connected to your spiritual selves. However, they're reaching out to the portion of you that is physically focused to have these communications that will become more and more frequent. You might notice this coming in oscillations for you. So you might have periods in your life where it's more readily available and periods in your life where it's less readily available because it's going to be very much synchronized with your theme of exploration. Nobody, especially you, don't want to get distracted, shall we say, by too much of this happening. So it might come in stages and some of you might experience this to much greater degrees than others. But overall, collective consciousness speaking, yes, that is what you can say thinning of the veils. What we might say, the stepping up of your vibration into fourth density, you will recognize that there is no true separation between you and spirit, between you and your own higher mind and your own soul between you as a physical focus and the higher minds and souls of others, those that are physical, those are, that are non-physical, those that are extra dimensional. Many of you are opening up to channeling in a variety of ways and you will be opening thusly up to various manifestations that previously were invisible for a large part of humanity, be they nature spirits, be they spirits of the deceased, as you say, be they extra-dimensional spirits that are working with you in a variety of ways, be there other aspects of you which are having experiences in other times, in other places, in other dimensions, be they extraterrestrial consciousnesses that are peeking into your dimension, preparing the way for contact, all kinds of experiences will begin to open up to yourselves as a civilization 
And you will have noticed that for many decades now upon your world, there is a much greater fascination, a revelation, and communication with what you say, spirits of the dead. There is more of a cultural fascination with this topic. The idea of near-death experiences being reported more commonly. The idea of out-of-body experiences being talked about and experiences that are sought after by a larger and larger portion of the population. So this is happening. And you are, in a manner of speaking, at the very vanguard of a massive transformation that's occurring on your planet. So you will be looked at as the ancestors that paved the way as it well. Of course, you will be unpaving your earth. So it's a kind of funny metaphor, but the idea is you are creating the way for literally like laying the foundations of a new civilization. And this is in your hands, a very precious task. For it is one thing to build a house, but to lay the foundation, this is truly precious. You do not even know how much you are held in high regard by the generations that follow you. You are held in very, very high esteem. So hold yourselves that way too and you will accelerate the process. So yes, you will be connecting more readily depending on your theme of exploration and what is relevant for your lives. But of course, collectively, yes, much, much, much more of this is on the way. You will recognize when someone passes, it is as if they move to another city, another state of vibration. And you will not have such a dreadful grief that you experience now because you'll still have the contact that you so desire to have that is still relevant for your life. So yes, to answer your question briefly, it's a big, big yes. Thank you. Oh, another question. Yes? Actually, it's just a statement. Very good. Again, um, an insight that arose during our session together. I was just in deep gratitude for this collective field that we are weaving together. And I realize that so much of the value of experiencing live channeling is just for that. It really seems to amplify and enhance the meditative connection to these other states, to hold it collectively. It, it really is very much enhanced and amplified. And I was delighted also to experience that, again, the questions and observations that were shared were very much ones that were going through my mind and I just smiled inwardly as people shared. They go, yep, I was thinking about that. Yes, I was, yes, 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 yes. So it was really beautiful to experience that directly. Uh, it made me think about, especially with, with references to connecting to those who have already made their transition and how there are, as cult, we have cultures that celebrate that and that it, as a collective, we can sort of attune our awareness to that maybe once a year. I'm thinking about the celebrations of the Day of the Dead. But now this is widely available. This is very much accessible as these veils are thinning. So I just want to thank you as a channel for, for serving in this way, as this point of focus. And I really want to thank everyone here who has contributed and co-created with me, with you, with all of us together um, to create this conscious space. So I'm just in very deep gratitude for that. And I just find that I, I so appreciate just being in the stillness and being in the enhanced vibration as I'm listening to the lesson, the teaching, the sharing. So thank you. Deep gratitude. And deep gratitude for you and each and every one of you. Oftentimes when you 
bring something into the discussion, you are recognizing yourselves as part of the co-creative multidimensional crystal that we are co-creating together in this particular moment. And you are, in a manner of speaking, highlighting yet another facet and weaving together a harmonic frequency. And so each of us is part of this larger whole when we come together like this. And indeed it expands beyond the quote-unquote live experience because everything is here and now. And even those that listen in at a later time will find their own synchronicity with the way they connect to this message for you cannot perceive what you're not a vibration of. And when you become a certain vibration, this transmission will then become available to you at this time. At that time, at this time, this is all one time. And you will know that it resonates with you as well. So it goes out, these vibrations go out in all directions. And you can know that if you're hearing it, it's because something within you is already resonating. And in some ways you are connected to this multidimensional crystal and you're revealing that connection to yourself. As you hear this very message, we are indeed part of one large family and revealing to ourselves in unique patterns the ways in which we are all connected. So thank you for this sharing. And so we will then at this time begin to bring things into a sense of uh, a resonant closure. And we don't necessarily mean closure in a negative way for our doors are always open and this frequency is always being transmitted. Yet we recognize in your time-space reality you will have things to get yourselves going into. But recognize that this is a reflection of your higher mind and thusly you can establish this link and this connection at any time and all the time and infuse your physical lives with this energy by taking the action on the impulses to the best of your ability. Of course, as Fashar would say, as the Sasanis say, with zero insistence on a particular outcome. And of course, you know the last part, staying in a positive state, all that good stuff. It's about application. So when we say closure, we are saying, in a manner of speaking, the transition to acting on that which has been revealed within you, to implement it, to roll your sleeves up and to really bring this into a crystallized, physicalized form through your action to ground this energy into your lives by acting on it, by being inspired by it to act on it in whatever way fits your theme of self-exploration. So we will then send you with whatever blessings are ours to give, we give wholeheartedly. And whatever blessings are yours, we suggest you give to yourselves, for you are indeed blessings. You are wonderful Christmas presents and birthday presents and all kinds of presents and blessings. And recognize yourselves as that and be that for yourselves, for one another, for the world. And with that we will then send you on your merry ways, wishing you a most loving, fond, beautiful, good day. grid view here. That was nice. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. You're welcome and thank you. It felt very you. Yeah. Uh, uplifting and uh, like I had mentioned before, nurturing. So thank you. Yeah, I, I, I noticed just different qualities coming through, but there is more of a weaving and integration of the healing arts and the channeling state for me. And I'm seeing, actually that was part of the channeling as I remember that it's not this and that, it's just different aspects of the one thing. So I'm seeing that the healing is a form of channeling, but channeling is also a form of healing. 
And that's all a reflection of your personality and all the different things that you're interested in too. Yes. That's why it comes through like that. So that's really cool. Yeah, I, I really get this, this, the blending of the healing and the channeling, yeah. Or somebody else would be, you know, maybe translating it into music and healing or or, or some other form, yeah. I, you know, I just want to ask, I, uh, because we're so, we have so much synchronicity, did anybody get a, a vision of a, of a maypole? Uh, I, I'll tell you what I was seeing when, when Tom was talking in the beginning was that it was like this one big pole in the middle of a yard and all the strings around it, we were all kind of hanging on and wow. going around it. And it seemed like the maypole was kind of like one entity and all these individuals connected but yet separate and started to swirl around and then they could kind of lift their feet off the ground and it was like fun wow uh, so i just threw that out there because i thought well maybe somebody had a similar feeling or something that i didn't have a, a particular vision but i love your image because it evokes the feeling yes i was having exactly uh, of like you said, yeah, floating above, separate, but, but connected. Go, oh, what a lovely image to communicate of an experience, a feeling I was having. Exactly. So, so yeah, that's how, that's how, the, oh, yeah, that's, that's lovely. Yes, I, I would agree with that. So even though I didn't see it, I felt it. Yes. As a, a quality, an experience. Yeah. That image totally matches what I, perceived in a feeling state in the channeling so it's like you're you, it's like each one of us receives it in a different way and you've got a great visual of it well and to me it, i'm remembering actually learning how to do a maypole dance with ribbons oh. and the, the the thing is that you want you have to do it just right to get the pattern of the ribbons crisscrossing from the top of the pole and it's it's that connectedness that we all have our own ribbon <laughs> We're all cruising, flying, um, but we are all connected through that where two or more are gathered, you know, mm. that spirit, the pole, whatever, we, the light. Um, so that's beautiful um, metaphor, Chris. Yeah, I really sense like we're all getting it in just a different, like we're all looking at the crystal from a, at, a, at a different facet of it, or we are each a different facet of it. lovely i mean it is very much i mean so often um i know for myself personally i do desire direct experience it's lovely to read mm -hmm. lovely to share but i want to feel it yes i want the direct hotline yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> so it's really lovely you know to to this moment again to have this experience as a collective oh yeah it works <laughs> here we are it's plug right plug now. in yeah yeah plug in yeah otherwise you're just like reading and thinking about an experience and it's just like not even close i mean it's it has its place but yeah to, to directly do it which is yeah kind of what the whole mystery school is about is to roll our sleeves up and just do all these things together exactly so yes thank you for playing yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> It's really interesting, if I, if I can just jump in because it just came to me. I've been seeing a lot of what I call overlays lately. Like if I'm out in the front yard or out in front of the house, I kind of see different times and different mm. people and different things that have happened there. And they're really not like you. Like I'm looking at you. It's more of a feeling tone. It's more of a, a pattern. And I was out in the backyard, and I have this old, old shed. It was probably built around the time of the house in the early 50s. And I'm tearing it down because it's fallen down, and I find myself up above on the ladders and stuff in this upper energy field. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing the mother calling the children. Wow. And uh, It's been really, really interesting, really, really interesting to see uh, where I am in different, I guess, Tom, you might call them uh, templates. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They're different, different patterns. It's, it's in different layers. It's, it's, it's really interesting. 
gives a whole new meaning to everything is here and now. Like every time I work on the garden or on the house or something, it's just like there's always a metaphor of why this particular thing is happening in this particular way. And it's like you're, you're interpreting your life like a dream. It's like this is a dream symbol as well as, you know, it's the practical of what I'm doing, but there's also layers of meaning to this event that's happening that I'm part of. Like the little hummingbird that's been coming to my uh, to my deck is just like reflective in so many different ways. You know, it's like if it reflects to one thing in one way, Lilia comes over and it's like, oh, this I see how this reflects in another way. I'm like, yeah, that too. <laughs> it's like there's actually layers of meaning to these symbols, which is amazing. Awesome. Well, I'll put out the next survey as usual. And I will wish you, as always, a fond good day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, everybody. everybody.